Type fat. J O N. Give me some. Give me some goddamn. Give me some of that. Nashville. Box Chevy. 215. <laughs> some sixes on that bitch, but they just stuck on them. <laughs> <laughs> they rubbing like a motherfucker. Coming down, okay. hey, coming, coming down, jumping. Tension pulling, squeaking like a motherfucker. But that bitch all motor. That's tough. Yeah, play me some just like that. That's all I need. That's tough. Oh! This, this feel like when you gotta warm your breakfast up. Like, like somebody at the house cook and you woke up late. You woke up late? It's <laughs> on, man. The way it gotta be warmed up. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that feel like. This feel like when you finish with DUI school. <laughs> Graduation DUI school music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We just now finally getting to hit the road. Yeah. 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 Again. As soon as you get your car to DUI school and start your shit up, just come out. Just got your license back. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about when your baby mama called and she say, Never mind. It don't matter what that never mind go to. That's just a good idea. What? Don't you love when the motherfucking counsel on you? Hell yeah. They Some people be in their feelings. I love when the motherfucker be like, don't worry don't about worry it. Don't worry about it. We ain't going no more. They Appreciate don't even, you anyway. They don't, oh. even, they don't even care about what you never mind. I don't know, right? Don't even matter. Yeah. I fuck with that. We in here, low. We in here. We got a special one today, man. What you Just talking food. about? This special right Bro, here. you never know who gonna be in the trap with us. You did. You feel me? Bro, you look outside, it just be niggas outside rolling up and see him. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm glad you said something. Right. Nah, but we got some real niggas in here with all us today, way, man. Oh, First of all, we got one of the coldest motherfucking producers in the motherfucking game yeah. right here. Just sitting here chilling. Rolling this nigga up. be everywhere. I taught this nigga everything you know, bro. I believe you. Oh, boy. I, I show this nigga how to hit the beat machine. Come on, man. <laughs> man, hey, R.I.P. Insane Wayne, man. man. Big bro, man. Insane bro. Wayne. I want to be here if it wasn't for Big Bro. We finna talk about all that. Then, we got motherfucking cash bills on. Ooh. You dig? This nigga got so much rap game history, you can mention G Unit, you can mention Cash Money. Keep going. Man, you can Man. mention Dr. Dre. You can mention Man. niggas like Eminem. You can mention all of them niggas, and he was really right there with them, ready to knock some out about it. And in the studio, ready to wrap a circle around a nigga, too. Oh, my mama. Man, this nigga had a motherfucking anthem with two hip hop legends dissing each other on that motherfucking man. <laughs> Man, if you don't know what I'm talking about, talking about one of the coldest niggas ever to come out of Cashville, nigga. He the one who let you know that they were telling. Yes, sir. Listen. You feel me? <laughs> None other. Exactly. Young Buck, aka Buck Boy. And I brought, and I brought, I brought my knife from the Vibe Awards with me today, nigga. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, yeah. nigga? I brought the yeah. fork yeah. in yeah. the knife. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what a fork at, nigga. Hey, hey, uh, cut the music. Since you brought it up first, check this out. Uh, <laughs> when when the streets heard, we don't know what happened, and we ain't gonna ask you what happened. When we heard what allegedly happened, every nigga who was in, who even thought that they was a been in your position, was like that nigga was not wrong. <laughs> Big fact. You supposed to do shit like that. Big fact. That's the billions. That's the bank. We right will there. figure out the rest of this shit. Come yeah. get me. And they did. He made sure I'm still right here on 85 <laughs> Strain. <laughs> I did something right there. <laughs> you was not wrong. Shout out to Dr. Dre, oh, bro. Real. You did. And even 50, you feel what I'm saying? Because he, at the time, he was like, man, you know, I got you too. So that situation, I was able to just, you know, walk through. It was one of them situations where, you know, shit happened. Honestly, I did not know what the commotion was about at that time. Right. Like it was me and Banks backstage about to uh, bring out a, a war for Snoop. And just the commotion popped out. You know, I don't know, man. Somehow Fork just magically appeared out of nowhere. Right. You feel me? And, uh, you know, I made it through that situation, man. Blessed it. Like a real nigga would, well, you got to do that. Because at some point, your real nigga instincts going to kick in and right. be like, uh, get to the motherfucking house. Hold two. on one second. Check the mic. Send the lady. Check, check. Right. 
Check. Young, check. Ma- young buck, check. your big one, two, ass one, chain one, two, has uh, uh huh? Fuck the microphone uh-huh. up. Your big ass chain. He got that big. You ass. got a. You he got, got a big ass, ass chain. The <laughs> <laughs> big ass chain. He had a. He got a. He got a big he ass got chain. A big that bitch was big. He got it from that on the street. Boom. He got a big ass chain. And on the camera, you see, he got a big ass chain. You heard me, bitch, it ain't right. He yeah. got a big ass chain, and it done fucked up the mic. I had a chain on so big, that bitch was big as a crib. I had some diamonds in that bitch, it looked just like where your grandma live. Yeah, saving up your money for a bigger chain. Everything on my neck don't stand a chance. I'm trying to stay in my lane. I should have wore a little chain. <laughs> but you and did. Then I brought a big ass chain. <laughs> I brought a big ass chain. A big chain like no other. And I remember that chain from all this album cover. I just had a big ass chain. You ain't lying, my nigga. I just figured I'm on 85 and slam, my nigga. Come on. And I put up in this motherfucker. That bang, I said, I'm gonna wear my big ass chain. That's okay, that's on the mixtape. That's it, big ass chain. Big ass chain. Fuck big ass chain. Yeah. Yeah. Man, listen, you know what I mean? We done ran into each other so many different places, hey. man. Literally in the mall, yeah. hotels, nigga. And I always, whenever I see him, he by himself, I'm by myself, and it's always, what's up, nigga? But I got a question, man. I've been wanting to ask you this, but every time I ran into you, we was moving. And I've been wondering this for a long time. Mm-hmm. When you said, Welcome to Cashville, motherfuckers. <laughs> was you smoking a blunt or taking a shit, nigga? Because that was the strongest. <laughs> Welcome to Cashville, motherfuckers. I was like, nigga, I'm never going there. Listen to how you said that shit. <laughs> Welcome to Cashville, motherfuckers. And that beat drop, ping, ding, 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 ding. That's one of the coldest songs. Like, And that was the first song on the CD, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I come from a small town where organized crime is the rule. You kill niggas without permission, niggas mm-hmm. gonna kill you. We bang them rags too, red, red and blue. blue. That shit ain't only out, out there on the west side, side fool. fool. I said, man, that nigga, that nigga Big say, sex. man, nigga, the, the South ain't safe no more, so get a gun and pray to God that you make it to C21. I was like, okay, I'm not going that <laughs> That ain't what Dolly Parton and them was talking about, nigga. That's Young somewhere different. is the first nigga to make a pre-ass whooping anthem. This nigga had a song that came on before niggas start fighting. I, I hate talking, buddy, about to get his ass, ass stomped. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck happened before that? Yo, he was talking. That's a classic. That's all it takes. Fucking record, bro. bro. When you heard <laughs> these niggas sitting they verses back, did you even put together that they was talking about each other? Tip nah, and Luda. you know I'm. Shout out to both of them, even to this day, Tip and Luda. But when I created that record at the time. You know, I, I my first mind of getting a feature was to stretch out the tip. Bro, do you know that about 30 niggas jumped on that remix? Yeah, man. That's how you, you know, know you got one of them ones when Thanks. everybody want to be on that everybody bitch. Everybody on them all. That beat was so hard. Ooh. Man. <laughs> it was like, who was that box? Because that was actually who from was that beat. <laughs> DJ uh-huh. Paul. DJ Paul. DJ Paul <laughs> made stump, mm-hmm. man. And um, yes. Memphis niggas. We man. actually got a whole Memphis, tape man. Word. just dropping in uh, right after Back on my book, Shoot Volume 3 that I got out now, me and DJ Paul just uh, wrapped up our tight tape. It's titled Unexpected, so it's one of them ones that got that same stump type of flavor. Yeah. You know, even creating that record, man, uh, I had reached out to Tip to, 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 to put a verse on there, and when he, when he sent the verse back, it was, it was really that bar that he had on there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that made me be like, uh, now, me getting beat down, that's ludicrous. Yeah. So I was letting different motherfuckers head and shit, and me and 2 Chains is, is 100 with each other, and we was real close at that time, too. Uh, I had let him hit a record, and he was like, yo, bro, you got to let Luda hit this shit. And, uh, you know, honestly, I didn't even really have no idea that they was, you know, having what little issues or whatever at the time. Uh, but when, when I let Luda hit, you know what I'm saying? He was just like, uh, Buck, man, shit, bro, I gotta jump on this shit right here. I'm like, hell yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it was more or less, when Luda heard it, he was, uh, I think he heard more than just that bar where Tip was kind of speaking and saying whatever he felt, but 
Out of respect, I jumped back at Tip first and was like, yo, man, listen, Luda heard the record, he wanna jump on it. You ain't got no problem, Tip was like, nah, shot it, man, let him, you know, go ahead and let him do his thing. So, uh, you know, the record came out and I, I really respect that record to this very day because to me, it's one of those records where, you know, you got two legendary artists, you know, going back and forth on, 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 on one record but it stayed hip -hop. on wax, yeah. stayed hip hop. It wasn't nothing mm -hmm. that, that got out of hand and you know uh, turned into any kind of real beef, I think. Uh, honestly, by the time I went to put the, the project, put that album out, Luda and Tip had, uh, I think, reconciled whatever situations that they had, so the label wasn't, wasn't really there for, for Tip's verse still yeah. being on on the record, so last minute I had to, you know, throw game on that game. It was like the newest addition to GU, and he needed that look uh, for a while. I, I felt like shit, game, I'm putting you on this motherfucker, you know, in regards of replacing Tip with it, but the record had already blowed up, and so, like you said, there's so many different versions of it, you know, you, I heard another fucking version of it the other day. Like, damn, nigga, I ain't know you was on here too. Nigga, it's everybody in yeah. the South yeah. jumped on that month. I remember, I remember I seen the interview with Tip was talking about this one. He was still wearing his hats like this. He had the grill and he was like, well, I laid my verse down first. And if I would have heard the verse that he laid, then I would have heard a different record. I'm like, ooh, nigga, he would have came with something. Ooh, a nigga. And then just that. the nigga in me was like, I wonder what he would have said if he'd have heard that shit. Yeah. It probably but I salute Tip worse. to the fullest because you know, even when he, like I say, I stepped, I, I had a stretch back out to him. It was like, yo, Luda want to jump on it. And uh, I'm sure somewhere in the line, he had to feel like Luda was going to throw some type of shot or say something. And he could have easily, you know, been a bitch ass nigga and said, no, nah, man, I, take me off of it. But he, he, he laid the flow there for Luda to come and Luda done what he done, and like I say, man, that is one of my favorite records that I've created. Uh, is the Just song. for that backstory, that yeah. like that shit gonna live forever. You will never sure. like you probably never see two rappers like that. You know, that's, like you said, yeah. that's in the middle of a lyrical disagreement. That not, not like didn't even know what was really going on until then. It's just a lyrical, yeah. a, listen, a lyrical jab. That's the thing. I think we need more stuff in, in, in this generation. Meek is like now. the only thing we done seen since then. But see, them niggas, like, they ain't never gonna let that but, shit go. And that's the worst part about it. They ain't cool now. They ain't cool. Trust me, they ain't cool. Niggas ain't cool. Drake and me. Niggas ain't cool. I know they cool. Niggas ain't cool. <laughs> <laughs> them niggas was cool before they fell out. Now them niggas, they all right. Them, just cause the niggas ain't into it, like, don't matter. Man, they cool. all right. We all right. We ain't cool. I'm saying them niggas can never show be cool. Yeah, yeah. We get money. some money. Rappers these but days, they don't let shit. Up a dressing room. They, they don't let shit slide no we more. Finna, we ain't just finna be buddy buddy type shit. It's just. For the, yeah. I guess for the check, for the business, and not even the check. I guess I don't know about the nigga situation to be honest with you, but you know I just think hip hop need more of those type of records, those, those that competitive. You know, a lot of people be having different situations and having you know different problems with each other as as rappers and shit, and you know a lot of it results into. You know, how many diamonds a motherfucker can buy more than you or whatever accolades come along with how many records of now how many streams a motherfucker got versus anything. A lot of that shit can be I wouldn't even play that on, shit no more. Niggas done hit a billion. Big fat. Nigga, if you if you behind in the nigga, you lost that one. But I, I think from what you just said, I, my question to you is 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 the game bred for that anymore? Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of that probably was lost in the in the wake of people seeing what happened with guys that was really active and going to get active when it got to the point where you ran into each other and a lot of people probably ain't built for that no more. So do you think that the game is bred for competitive energy? You know, honestly, man, I would just, I would say this generation right now has kind of steered itself into having to feel like they have to match some of the shit that they say in the records. And, you know, even rap in, its, in itself is just a competitive game in itself. It's like, it's, it reminds me of a boxing match, really, because everybody fighting to be number one. No matter what, everybody chasing to be, 
you know, the, the biggest, the biggest that they can be with it. I just feel like this generation right here that we're dealing with, as uh, far as the youngsters that you see winning and some of the issues that they have, it's, it's, it's resorted into hands-on violence, but it was no different in the same way when we was there. I think it's room for it. I think it's room for it, but it would have to be the conflict of two artists both looking to go down that route versus then the route that we used to be, you know, what we seeing playing out right now. And that's motherfuckers getting killed, man. You know, motherfuckers have differences and you see a motherfucker and you know, it's just about, you know, who gonna catch a body type of thing now. So if we take the bodies to the, to the, to the bars, you understand what I'm saying? Even with G-Unit and I, in the beginning of at least my time amongst being with G-Unit, it was based on real life. The issues that was going on with real life issues involved with say a 50 or whatever. So, you know, when we had those vests and shit like that on, it was for real. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, for the camera. It was really niggas trying to protect their life at any moment shit can go down. You yeah. know what I'm and saying? And you put that on record. Four folks, bulldog, small enough to fit in a nigga boot, so it's whatever, whenever, whatever you want to do. I'm like, okay, these niggas is but, really that though. But I, I saw a clip uh on the internet of y'all two talking to Big U. And uh, salute to him. Whoa. And uh, he was telling the story. You know, I mean, I I don't know if you want to get into the, the actual story of what happened, yeah. but just seeing that you were willing to be as active as you were, my question to you is: as an artist, do you feel like that's something that's necessary in the game now, as it was back then, to, to be somebody that was really <laughs> willing to go and show that these words that I'm speaking are legit? You know, it depends on the situation and the in the individuals that you're dealing with. In my situation, I would say, you know, yeah, because I've always been involved in real life issues around the music. So it wasn't like, I felt like I could resort to just allowing certain shit to go down. And you get put in certain situations where it's not just about your life, but it's about everybody's life that you with. You understand? And if, if, if it's any man or anybody in my eyes, if you feel like your life is being threatened, you're gonna do whatever it takes to, to make sure, you know, you maintain that life, you know, of yours. I love living, you know, so I just done been put in situations where, you know, I feel like my life is threatened. I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to survive. Well, I gotta, I gotta make it home to my kids, homie, period. And uh, like I say, a lot of this shit is just based on the energy of the individuals that you're having issues with. Speaking of issues, bro, tell me when you start teaching drama boy how to make them beats and shit. <laughs> hey, nah, I ain't talking to you how to make no beats. Straight <laughs> up and down. Yeah. This yeah. nigga won't even teach me how to make no fucking beats right yeah. there. Yeah. Nigga like, I be bro, watching you though. Don't need me no more, nigga. Yeah. I, mean, I cook that shit right up in front of you, goddammit. You Good see dope. Hey, nigga see the recipe. Bro. Right. Yeah. Well, shit, let's from start to finish book. How you get in the game, bro? You got a lot of, you got a long history, bro. And people think it just, a lot of the younger generation don't think it just started with the unit. But nigga, you was putting shit down before Facts. that even. Facts. I was a, I'm one of the ones where, you know, I came in the game, um, the first individuals that I, w I was basically around was Cash Money. How old were you when you got it? I was around 14 years old, man, 14, 15. Lil Wayne didn't even have a dreads, nigga. The nigga still had the baby fro like yours. Oh, word? No, it wasn't like mine. I guarantee you it wasn't like mine. I'm the only nigga with one like mine that in this time. I'm, I'm the only young nigga with this. I ain't nobody else got this. Yeah. No, Me but, and Maurice White, that's it. <laughs> real facts, though, but, uh, you know, uh, they had came to my city. We was always big fans of that music, as far as me and my circle and niggas of that. I came up with, and one of my partners had picked up a CD. I think it was Chopper CD in the Ghetto. It was like, Ooh, what? It was volume like one. Shit, man, volume one. Classic. The shit, orange, like, like big ass bullets was goddamn big far. Green out and the out sky. the sky and shit. Chopper bullets, man. And homie, now, you know, they had that, that wave throughout the South. You feel me? And yeah. We was just That's fans, crazy. picked up the CD. One day, and my partner had caught, I was a youngster, you know, in the back seat. 
my other partners and shit, you know, they was kind of the ones who rotated my city and shit like that. So they was jokingly, you know, man, it's a number on the back of this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And called the number. It's like, man, what y'all niggas want to come down here to the Ville? And uh, whatever it was, it was pennies and shit. Niggas was like, what? Y'all niggas come here tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, they, they didn't come, but it ended up being like a week or two later. Niggas call themselves trying to put a show together and shit. Bunch of dope boy niggas don't know nothing about the game, but you know, get a venue, got them niggas to come to the city. And when they touched down, Baby was really fucked up of how young we was and really, active. Re really active like that. So uh, I can't. I, I think that really, really was the motivation for him to, you know, build a bond at the time with my with my surroundings and. Uh, they ended up booking a studio. Uh, my brother from another mother, Lil Jimmy, had, had got in touch with me somehow. Niggas didn't have no cell phone, but he got in touch with somebody to pick me up and bring me over to the studio. Walked in the studio. First nigga I, <clears throat> I seen was, was Juvenile. I'm like, damn, let that nigga go right there. You feel what I'm saying? And uh, went on in and it was BG, Juvenile, Turk, Wayne. And then the nigga baby walked up to me as a youngster, first words to this very day, I never forget it. He said, spit some little one. And uh, like I say, man, I was always I was already in the streets full fledged, just trying to find a, a, a fucking way. Uh, but music was always my thing from day one. So when the nigga told me to spit <laughs> some, I had fucking uh Do you remember what you spit? I don't. I couldn't even I couldn't even tell you that shit to this day. That's some dope shit. It wasn't one thing because what happened was when I spit, he immediately told Lil Wayne, hey, come in, nigga, spit something. So me and Lil Wayne battled it out. And uh I tell niggas, I didn't win what I won, nigga. You did, because, you know, walking from that situation the next day I was I was getting a call from my partner saying, yo, baby want, want, want us to come to New Orleans with him. He wanna give you a situation. <laughs> So my life started basically from Cashville to New Orleans at that moment. I left, I was supposed to be in school, you know what I'm saying, around that time with school never was my thing. Uh, man, never? It never was. Never, man. not even in like first grade. I believe this nigga. I believe this nigga. <laughs> school was never so my thing. So you was thing. in first grade, like first grade, first grade, first grade I didn't, oh my mommy. <laughs> Even in first grade, I ain't really fuck with school, man. I was never. I, I mean, you know, it just was one of them things. Like my my childhood was for real coming up on some. You know, I come from a single parent background, and it was about really, uh, really trying to keep the fucking lights and water on in real life. You know, you know these rappers come through and be having them. Everybody got a struggle story, but my struggle in my life it kind of is there for. The, like niggas know what I come from throughout my city. I come from nothing. You dig? So I really, that's what forced me in the streets at a young age, just trying to kind of help my moms get out of the situation that I was brought up in. Yeah. It was about hustling. I was one of them niggas that used to cut every nigga in the neighborhood grass, take out the trash and shit, pumping gas until it, before a nigga ever picked up a pack trying to do anything with it. I just was one of them ones just trying to make a dollar to be able to provide. But yeah, man, it was, it, my journey started with cash money. Times where baby would drop Wayne and Turk off at school and I'd ride around with him, you know, doing, doing our thing, just, just trying to make shit happen. Uh, I come from a real solid circle of individuals and shit. So, you know, even in Juvenile's home video, the yellow Ferrari and things like that, those were our vehicles. We, we pulled them vehicles there to... Nigga, to, you had a yellow Ferrari when you was 14? No, nigga, it was in the circle, though. So oh, you might nigga, as well, well basically, it. yeah, you did. Yeah, no wonder you ain't fuck with school. Thanks. Bitch, I got a Ferrari outside. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was in the circle, mm -hmm. so, you know, shit like that. Like I say, man, we really, really come from the streets and all that good shit. And from there... The difference is, is I can give you all of the different stories in regards to coming up with cash money, but I can't play you no music that where I was actually what I was there for. You know, my my situation was 
based on me coming to Cash Money to, to do a deal, and it turned out to be in, well, in my mind, where I was kind of like pushed to the back, not because Baby didn't want to get to me or whatever, it's just that they shit. They blew up. They blew up so fast, so, um, you know, he had to focus on what was working versus trying to break a brand new artist. But I never was a tag along nigga, so it forced me to have to go back and make a decision within self. Am I going to, you know, I'm 18, 19 years old now. You know, these niggas is, all I wanted was an opportunity to be heard. Let the world, let the streets be the judge of, of me. Right. And uh, it was just, I, was, I, I had records, but none of them was actually getting pushed to the world or none of that shit. So I made a decision to come back home to Cashville and uh, start my own independent push. You dig what I'm saying? I felt like I had built the name for my for from my city by just being amongst them. You know what I'm saying? So, shit, man, I went and put me a little CD together back then. I think it cost $300 to press up a thousand CDs. Damn, I was that was a good deal. From, hell yeah, I'm selling $10 a piece, you do the math. I slowed down from doing whatever I was doing uh, just because I read my, the music star really paying me. I, I love the hustle. Yeah. The hands-on money was really being more it started making more sense to me because I put my life on the line for less, lesser. So that's where the hustle came in and just starting to understand the whole independent game and, and you know, really pushing myself to get to where I'm at. And like I say, that led back to me coming with cash money, uh, but it didn't work out. And I actually was with Juvenile when I ran into 50 and started my, my situation with G-U, you dig what I'm Bro, saying? How crazy was that to be the only dude from the South in the group with some dudes from New, New York? York? That shit was, it, it, it's a crazy experience, just to be honest with you. It was one of those things where I felt like, uh, never felt like I had nothing to prove, but I always done felt like I got to hold my own. I'm not just doing it for me, but I'm doing it for the South. You get right. what I'm saying, where I come from. And, uh, you know, it was almost like this, this competitive that we have created amongst each other. You understand? And everybody wanted to kind of outdo each other, but in a good way yeah. on the records. So, you know, in that era, in that time, the energy was in a different place of, of music in itself. Let me ask you this, like you was coming up in a time where the perception was dudes, dudes from the South weren't lyrical or couldn't rap. Facts. Like, and you had really had to face that. It's like an uphill, like an obstacle facts. in the game as a rapper from the South. That was the number one Big criticism facts. that they tried to throw. And like you always been a lyrical dude mm -hmm. who went out the way to say some shit like, do you still feel like they're sleeping on the on the South lyricism at that time up until now or what? I think a lot of the I think a lot of the youngsters now has adapted uh, a lot of other things than just the lyricism as far as for the, from, from the South. You know, we, we we dress we dress the way we dress. You know what I'm saying? We shine the way we shine. Uh, for me, in that time, it wasn't about the other things that now uh, put you in front of this camera and, and you can kind of blow up uh, other than actually being able to have bars. You dig what I'm saying? And I felt like uh, it was a point of time where we didn't get that, that burn, that play from the East Coast that we really deserve as artists. Pimp C used to be very, very outspoken on that situation. Oh, yeah. Country in, rap to him. Yeah, big facts. Rest in peace to Pimp. He's one of the first ones that I that I met as well as a youngster uh, trying to get my ass on. And, uh, nigga, your childhood was better amazing. than this. Nigga had a Lamborghini, met Pimp C. <laughs> grew up fucked so up. So I'm 15, jump off the bus with cash money. Pimp C pumping gas. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, nigga, what the fuck you doing on that tour bus, man? <laughs> You out here fucking with the rap game, man. It's crazy because uh, rest in peace to my partner Biz, man. He's no longer living. Um, he 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 took me to Pimp C house, and I was honestly, it's crazy you say that because I was around 15 to 16 years old, and he brought me to Pimp, 
you know, even while I was still amongst Cash Money, but we were still kind of moving around and just, you know, filling this rap shit out, period. And when he brought me to Pimp, Pimp said something to me that stuck with me and still stick with me through my whole life and career. And then uh, Pimp said, I can't ask no nigga to starve, biz. And that right there was one of the realest things. At the time, I was kind of like, what, what do you mean he can't ask me to starve? And then he told me, you know what I mean? He was like, you dope. You're going you gonna to get to where you got to go. I just would be asking you to starve because we're dealing with our own situation right now. At the time, they was going jive. through shit with Jive and shit. You know what I'm saying? So that led me to, you know what I'm saying, respecting him enough to, 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 to know that he didn't, he didn't take advantage of being, me being young and naive to the game and, yeah. and just run me down the loop. He gave me real game. That shit right there made me, you know, know the difference because I ran into a lot of bullshit at the same time. Motherfuckers selling you dreams. And I was, I was nigga that done bought some of them sold dreams too. Well, I mean, that's what I was about to you know, ask you next. Where in the world I could have went to Pimp C house and that like... nigga would have put me out. I'd have been in the bathroom with that nigga furrow. Man, let the little nigga come to my house. He in the bathroom with my goddamn furrow in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it about you as a youngster that made these old hustling ass gangster ass niggas take you everywhere and let you be a grown ass nigga amongst Thanks. all these goddamn hustlers? Big facts. Hey, I'm Carlos Miller, and if you haven't heard, Blue Chew is making waves and bringing more confidence to the bedroom by offering chewable tablets that can help men get stronger and longer lasting erections. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of erectile dysfunction. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try BlueChew.com for free when you use our promo code 85SOUTH at checkout. Just pay $5 and ship. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. That's BlueChew.com, promo code 85SOUTH to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. I mean, uh, shit, I was one of them too. You dig what I'm saying? And shit, I ain't looking like I was... Young Eddie, I used to put it this way, man. I look like a grown man. man. I look like a grown man. Full beard. Like, yeah, he's 12, but you're like, yeah, hey, he exactly. not liquor and everything. You don't want no smoke with this young nigga. Trust me. <laughs> but I, Eddie can rap. <laughs> oh, man, just, you know, coming from these streets and shit like that, it's just, nigga, seen something in me, and, and, and that's what got me to really where I'm at now is, is, the, is the hustlers, is the, is the older guys that seem more than just me being in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Even though I was in the streets, I still had these older guys that was in the streets a little bit harder than me that didn't want me to be there. They didn't want me to go down their route. Yeah. And they knew and felt that I knew how to rap, so you know, whatever connections or whoever they know, they was just trying to give me something different and the shit ended up paying off to what it is now, you know? So at what moment, going through all of that that you just went through, at what moment did you feel like, I'm here, I finally got here, I did it? Oh, man. When, I, when, I, when, when 50 gave me my opportunity of, of being amongst G-Unit, you know, um, the first time I honestly truly felt it was when I had got that call from Shaw Money at, at that time, and he was like, yo, uh, 50 want to put the, the uh, Bloodhound record on his, on his Get Rich or Die Trying album. That was a record I already had. You understand what I'm saying? 50 basically got that record, uh, kept my verse on it, you know what I mean, and uh, put him a couple verses and shit on the record sung the hook that was already there and put me on the album. But when Shot Money was like, yo, nigga, Jim loves the record and he mixing it. I said, who? All right. That nigga was like, M loves the record. M, M actually mixed Bloodhound. 
And I, that moment right there, like I say, M was the fucking, like he is now, you know, one of the gigantics into this shit. And uh, I knew then that, yeah, I'm finna go, I'm finna, I'm finna make the best out of it. I think the icing on the cake out of all of that shit was when we, when I, when I got that plane ticket to come to LA and record, you know, and uh, I happened to be in a studio recording in LA. First time that me and 50 now had basically got in the studio to record, uh, we started immediately on the G-Unit project. And one of the first songs we created was G'd Up. And that track was produced by by Dr. Dre, so it was like I was in the booth doing my shit. And I was, you know, thinking of some shit to say, and then I heard <coughs> motherfucker was like, yo, say it like this. And I was one of them niggas like, nigga, don't tell me how to say nothing. I'm saying it. I've been rapping since I was nine, nigga. <laughs> nigga, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> so who said so? <laughs> who was that? You feel know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when I looked up at nigga, Dr. Dre was leaned over the big ass board. Looking at a nigga directly, I'm shit, man. How you want me to say it, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about. I don't know what you say? <laughs> How you want me to say it, bro? Like, but yeah, bro. To, to actually uh, be in that circle with Dre and M, you know, it's, it's just shit that I cherish to this very day. Like, um, you know, that was that I I've arrived feeling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it is what it so is. So when you when you started recording, you know what I mean, Welcome to Cashville, like and that, you know, I'm not just saying as you here, that's personally my favorite, favorite solo record of all of the G units. Like it was you and Lloyd Banks, but then, you know what I mean, as I listen to it now, I identify more with that record, you know exactly. what I mean? So when you started to record that, was that your first time ever going in and saying I'm recording a a record that's mine. Facts. Um, it's crazy because the, my process of making that record was different than what was going on through G Unit at that time. You know, going off into my solo, I had already seen the processes of how 50 created the, 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 the Get Rich or Die Trying, the Beg for Mercy, and then here comes the solo pause, and I, I just said, I'm gonna do something that everybody else wasn't doing. So I told Shot to start giving me my music on a CD without me knowing who the producers was. I wanna pick the music for the music instead of actually picking the producers from the name. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, uh, that right there was one of the methods that, you know what I'm saying, I still kind of follow today. Of course, we ain't got CDs, but what I... I was about I, to say, nigga. Yeah, what, what, what I got from that, though, was the fact of when I created Straight Outta Cashville, I had no idea who the actual producers was of the record. So once I made, you know, when I'm getting to the end of this tape, I started going and seeing who produced this, who produced that, and, and things like that, and realized I just created a whole project with pretty much guys that didn't have a big name. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I put a lot of, and gave a lot of producers that was trying to be heard a shot by just having that method, as well as kept my goddamn budget low. You feel what I'm saying? And uh, created one of the most uh, Low, low budgeted records that was that was done in G Unit period in the sense, uh, I was able to recoup off of that whole album in the first two weeks. You did what I'm saying, straight up, straight up. In the you first had drama, boy. I'm about to say, say speaking of producers, speaking of producers, speaking of producers, we got one of the coldest producers, nigga. To, you know what I mean? I mean, some of the best beats that you ever going to hear. Like, and for Run me. Oh, you, oh, oh, just, just drop, drop a few. For those drum. who don't know, give a couple Girl, this of the, the internet, that, that bro, everybody would know. You think motherfuckers know. be knowing, but they don't be knowing until you tell them. What's in my pocket, dog? Big, Big face, face hundreds. hundreds. 
I'm saying, man, stop playing with me, man. It's I'm right around, I'm getting it. I'm right around, I'm getting it. I'm smoking on the side. I put on for my city, no too. Stomach. You know what I'm saying? You got to know that. You know what I'm saying? You can look at my dad. I winning. put on. When you like to, you can look at my dad winning whenever. You know what I'm saying? No love. August I seen a Nicki Minaj. I mean, shawty. Keep Plies, going, nigga. T-Pain, you know what I'm saying? We come in the game. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no hands. Walk Whoa. Walk. You know the way you do it. You like when you do it. You got classic records. Drum we on the front. You know what I'm saying? Birdman. That jump went uh, platinum. You know what I'm saying? Birdman, we popping. NBA young boy. Yeah. Are you definitely yeah. buying fucking you know the rest of everything? I mean, it's, you know what I'm saying? My first, <laughs> <laughs> first record ever coming up with Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Well, I did uh, four records on the Life album. Then we follow up back to the basics with uh, When You See Me, Shot It, Poppy, Call It, Day You Holler. That's, that's what's, what's up. up. Yeah. What's up? Been John? a long time coming, a yeah. lot of dope yeah. running, yeah. yeah. hustling, trying to dodge the cases. That shit is boy, yo, God. That shit is in Tennessee. Yeah. 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 Come on, man. So oh, my mom. Go back to the basics. Nigga, the intro to my life, intro to my world. Hey, Chris, the pop seller and the white girl. Hold on, give me a bottle. Then the nigga get the standing on the goddamn couch. This motherfucker. My Glock stay cock rocks in a match. That nigga went what crazy, crazy on, on me. Yeah. And you was Straight in up. your bag too, what? nigga. Oh man, young nigga. I was, I was like, you know what I'm saying? When I bumped into God for the first time, I'm probably like 17. Boy, y'all niggas, niggas is just man. man. No, nigga, if you, you ain't did it, if you ain't did it, by the time you grow, <laughs> shit your ass down. Damn, these niggas out here waiting at 8 30 to have drinks. I'm a tennis nigga was on their second go round about something. Then 17, I jumped off the porch with God. We failed. Man, we was shit failures, fuck. These niggas was elementary school with Lamborghinis and shit. I had a bike, nigga. But then, hey, I had a work on. Y'all niggas was outside. That's the hustle. Man, look, man. When, I, when I'm telling you I came up on the, man, R.I.P. Insane Wayne. You gotta understand, my brother 14 years older than me, so a nigga who cut her, chopped her, you know what I'm saying, got all the chicks, you know what I'm saying, you got the whips, got the clothes, I'm wearing big brother, this the first nigga I wanna be like, walk like, talk like, all that, you know what I'm saying, and it's a cheat code, cause he doing beats for T. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I'm, 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 I'll say, bro, I got some shit too, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Anzel, Red Boy, you know what I'm saying, Manage Bun B, you know what I'm saying, do a lot of things with TMT. Man, he was the manager for TV. So he was like, man, come on, man, play something. You know what I mean? I ended up playing five beats, ended up with three beats on T Lab. Mm. So because my brother getting 2,500 to beat, I get 2,500 to beat. That's 7,500, three beats. I did Tennessee, We Wanging, and uh, man, what's, in, what's uh, Tennessee? Tennessee, 23s, we keep it clean, man. Tennessee, in the land of good and good in Tennessee. Bruh. That's me on the hook. I'm fucking 17, 18, on, you know man. what I'm saying? This is my first song on the radio, so that shit took off. We had the Tennessee Titans, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And, and my, I put Gotti, Gangsta Boo, Criminal Man, Tila. Bro, I don't want your haystack. Criminal, criminal man. man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, I don't hey, want track, bro. Come one on. of the most slept on rappers in the whole. Let me ask you. Come on, nigga. man. You don't fuck man, with that, that nigga. That Tennessee, stack, bro. that Tennessee connection, you know what I mean? Like, you coming Run from Nashville or you coming from Memphis. Like, y'all, Tennessee got a strong culture, man. Even to this day, some of the hottest young niggas. Pooh Shiesty, you know what I mean, out of oh, yeah. Memphis, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. They sent me my herbs, man. Oh, yeah. I sent me and woke up with yeah. seven in my yeah. herbs. And you know what? Like, I'm like, cool with his daddy, like, you, you know what I'm saying? He's cool <laughs> with his You know what I'm saying? I'm going really, like, to be all the way solid with y'all. Like, I give a lot of credit when it comes to, because I'm from Cashville, Nashville, and he's from Memphis. We're three hours away. Right. And it's always, and it, it, it used to be, and probably here and there, well, there was this separation between the two cities, okay? We didn't really just get along like that. It was one of those things I think was bred from the penitentiary. It's every, every it's city like, like that's the same like, way everywhere you go. Niggas, it's like D.C. and Baltimore niggas. Niggas like, are call us country. We call them niggas country type shit. Yeah, you think right, right. we all country. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. the nigga who, <laughs> I, I, one of the records that really broke the mold in, 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 kind of bringing us together was uh, the Stay Fly record. 
that me, uh, A Ball and MJG, Juicy J and DJ yeah. Paul did. That's why yeah. and, uh, that record was bigger than what people know because it was the first time where we had, you know, somebody from our uh, from, Nashville. from Nashville and Memphis and yeah. Memphis together. Yeah, you came wow. right up on that being a nigga too. Yeah. You was like them niggas just might let me smoke for free. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we know why. Yeah. Plugged yeah. <laughs> all the way in already. Then we oh, been waiting on Ball and G and Three Six Mafia to get together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because Memphis, the the city they love to hate, quote unquote. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. You know, I always try to bring that unification in. You know what I mean? Like, let me mix this shit up. Let me bring, like, you see what Atlanta doing? Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I just I always look at Atlanta like, damn, they got this shit down packed, how they blend and merge and make this shit everybody eat. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So I, I, I just implemented that, even with Welcome to My City, coming out with, Kane came up with Dolph. I mean, came up with Gotti, but still introducing Dolph. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and just, man. It's so, crazy. Hey. Working with Jeezy, working with Gucci. No, I first heard man, that. You, know, that. you on you hear A well. plus. Nigga, that Hold up, bro. Friend. I heard Buck online telling the craziest story about how DJ Paul sent Project Pat to pick you up, man. Big fan. Yeah. Damn, Damn. that's nigga. And it was <laughs> 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 Bro, we gonna get to these. Yeah. We got a lot of yeah. shit to break down. Right? Welcome right. back to the 85 yeah. South Show. Look. Yeah. yeah. Where you been or where you at in life, but right now we talking some real motherfucking pimp shit, rap shit, Tennessee Titans over here, man. That's what we got up in the building with us today. We got Young Buck, trying to boy. Yeah, man. And we, and we really just running it down, but I, I gotta hear this story in person, man. You say DJ Paul said Project Pat to pick you up. Yeah, man. From where? <laughs> the projects, nigga. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's the only person they could say. We at in the projects. Yeah, yeah. Pat. Hey. <laughs> project Pat. Project Pat. Project Pat. Right quick. Which one? <laughs> you know I got to hit. Get the, the but you know what's crazy? The nigga that he was riding with that nigga name was Lil Buck, and then he was a little nigga. It, his name was Lil Buck. And it's crazy about how that situation happened because I was actually with Baby when I met DJ Paul. I was on a, I think we was on some type of tour at the time and we was coming through Memphis and Baby was like, yo nigga, this is what I got coming. You dig what I'm saying? And Buck, come here and spit something for these niggas. And uh, I ended up spitting and Paul was like, nigga, you from, the, you from Tennessee, nigga? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, now I'm from Cashville, but I was a youngster. So, you know, uh, when my situation was, like I say, I was kind of moving around. One day uh, I, had, I had got a call because I had kept in touch with Paul, and he was like, uh, man, I'm, I, I, I need you on this record. And I'm like, what? He was like, man, I'm uh, Pat, Pat finna come pick you up. And that's like three and a half hours away. I'm like, he's like, where you want me to tell him to come? I said, tell that nigga to meet me at the Burger King parking lot across from Joe Johnson. They, and uh, hell yeah, he pulled up in a black navigator, man. Pat was, of course, big as fuck at that time. And it was like, man, I rolled back to fucking Memphis with this nigga. The, and it, like I say, it was one of the dopest experiences as a youngster <laughs> that I had. Boy, you a man to ride back with Project Pat. Hell yeah, no. That nigga see some shit. Because he, he probably first out of night. Tell him yeah. all the truth. Yeah. Ain't no license in the car. <laughs> Don't know son, who's son in the back. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but if you look in the car, so you know I got a strap. Yeah. You're like, you know what? Hold on, man. I'm going to hold this dick behind me, man. You know who's smashing out. I throw the little boy out the window. I don't know who asked him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a little boy driving cause I'm shooting out the window, bro. <laughs> I don't know who I done hit, but I didn't know I killed the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Then at the end, it's always, then we made it safely with the project in the hey, back. Hey, one thing, he's gonna make it back. He's gonna make it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make yeah. it back oh, okay. safely hey, to the now, stand spot, the yeah. count the loop. <laughs> yeah. that, that's the best thing you like about rappers, bro, when they tell stories. Project Man, Pat, one of the them your favorite album. rappers. When you listen to this shit, pay attention to this shit, bro. I guarantee your favorite rapper, he tell you a story. Nigga. Yeah. Yeah. But Man. I end up, I end up dropping a record from that though. He came and got me. I, a lot of people don't know I was on the, the uh, Hypnotized Posse song. It was like twenty niggas on the goddamn song. But he, Paul heard some 
from when he had heard me rap for him, ended up giving him that opportunity. Sent the nigga Pat to pick <laughs> me up, and we've been locked in ever since, bro, to be solid with you. You did, he one of them ones that's always to have my back like drummer. You know, through my ups and downs and shit like that, bro, and all these different things I done been through in the game. You know, them two are the ones that that's always gave me that motivation. Like, you got to keep going. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to keep doing this shit. Is that what he kept making the game history from? right now, bro. He just he got records with Gucci and Jeezy, and that out of all the versus battles that didn't happen, I feel like that one was the most impactful. Prolific, yeah. 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 You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, finally got so icy. To perform. see it perform, yeah. I never thought like, that would happen. Yeah, that's for real. real. Yeah. Now, now, being as though you, both of y'all, for this, for that matter, you didn't got so much rich history with so many artists. Was there any point where you realized you were one of the people that you grew up being around for artists? Like, did you ever have that moment where somebody came and saw you and was like, "Oh shit, young buck," and you ended up helping them and giving them the same game that a lot of these guys and gave you? Big facts, man. I I I've, I've watched this shit happen though. You know, with me and numerous artists, man, uh, I love seeing Lil' 42 Doug do his thing. Me and his father, <clears throat> you know, come up in the streets together. And, and uh, you know, I remember 42 just being really in the streets and really, really trying to find a way. You know what I'm saying? And I never could pre present no kind of opportunity to him but for me being and going through my own thing. But I watched him and I would tell him, you know, you got this shit, you gonna do your shit, you know what I mean? Just stay down, just keep pushing. And to watch him, you know, walk in to get his situation with uh, with uh, Gotti, uh, <clears throat> uh, even with Young Dolphin, his, his producer, band play, I, I gave him, you know, his push to the game in a sense by just giving him that opportunity to rap on his tracks. You know, I was going through so many different situations where he was a youngster that was like, almost understood the fact of, you know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. So it was like, I'm rapping on your music. And I used to always tell him, you know, if, if, if opportunity presents itself, take advantage of it. I'm trying to get myself through these contract issues and things like that. And now he's producing, you know, multiple hits for, for, for Young Dolph, you know what I'm saying? So. I mean, I can go on for days, bro. It's just like, I've always been one of them ones that, that's never been stingy with giving the knowledge. I don't call it game, because games is meant to be played. I give a motherfucker true, honest knowledge of, of what I've learned and uh, try to give a person an honest opinion, you understand, to whatever they looking to do, whether, if, <clears throat> whether it's something that I like or don't. You know what I'm saying? Or, yeah. You know, I just try to keep it as solid as possible, you know, with with these dudes because uh and, 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 and keep it where, you know, the same some of the same people you see going up, man, you don't do this shit right, you'll see them same people on your way down. So I try to not burn no bridges and shit with niggas and shit and keep it solid. But the way this game is kind of built, you know, you have a lot of times a lot of people uh, get in positions of power and they tend to either forget or don't acknowledge what got them there. So I just try to stay, you know, as humble and just stay as focused as possible. And that's what I would encourage a lot of these dudes that, that, that come from nothing to something and, and get in positions of power, you know, just, you know, take your blessing and, and for what it really is, is a blessing, you know, to, 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 to go from point A to point B or finally get to where you're trying to go. But just don't take it for granted. Yeah, you know hell yeah. Don't we see that shit, shit way too much. Sometimes these dudes take this shit for granted. And, you know. Through all the downs that you went through, though, you were just speaking on that. What kept, what kept the game from souring for, for you? You know what I mean? Like, because through all that you done been through that the public done seen you go Thanks. through, let alone what you done been through that you ain't, that yeah. don't nobody know about. What kept you Still Still saying me. fuck that shit. Yeah, my children, you know what I mean? man. My children, you know what I'm saying? It's my, my, my motivation. I got a good solid brothers like drummer. You know what I'm saying? Individuals like, you know, this, that, that know who I really am outside of some of the shit that get pushed in the public or have been pushed in the public. And uh, I find myself at one point in time trying to fight public opinion with a lot of bullshit. 
and had to just realize I'm never going to win that battle. So I'm the type of nigga where with a lot of this shit, you know, I've never had nothing to prove. What you see is what you get. Who I really am is who I really am. But I've been in front of a lot of shit that's been tangled and twisted. And uh, I try to be the one to untwist the shit because I stand for something. And I realize, man, I can't. It's never going to work that way. So honestly, letting go and let God in my situation has got me, you know, where I'm at. Outside of just having damn good music, quality street music consistently, you know, uh, it's always, I've always felt like I haven't got my just due. You know, um, <clears throat> I haven't truly felt like I've got my just due as a, as a solo artist. I've been blessed to have a, 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 a platinum album. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, platinum albums by being amongst the group. But uh, me as an artist, I still got so much more to offer. I always look to rap as almost a stepping stone to get off in the shit that I like to do or want to do, movies and different things like that. So it's just so much more in the game that I got to give. You need a know, cookbook, man. Straight up. <laughs> Audio cookbook. <laughs> right. Audio yeah, cookbook. Read it as, as fucking young book. Nigga. Two motherfucking yeah. eggs with your heart here, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> Put the butter in the skillet. Right. You don't listen to shit nobody tell you. <laughs> Let me produce it. I got the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of what you just said about public perception, rest in peace of Nip, I heard a Nip quote where he said, would you, you know, he read something that said, would you rather be at war with yourself and at peace with the world or at peace with yourself at war with the world. Big fact. So, you know what I mean? I think that's something Big that, fact. you know, people need to listen to because from somebody like you who went through so much bullshit publicly, Facts. you know what I mean? You pick whichever situation you want to say, you know what I mean? You knowing who you are and, and being content in that is something that you need to fight because now public perception is different than it's ever been. When you first got in the game, niggas said <clears> something <throat> about you. It might take you a couple days or weeks for you to even hear what a motherfucker said. Now, every time you pick up your phone and it's right you know, it's right there, there in front of you, you know what I mean? And it's or read or right. somebody with the same bullshit. I mean, like I say, man, I, I, I know who I am. And I also know I'm not perfect, but I've learned that I put myself in certain positions to have to deal with a lot of bullshit. So I've just learned how to uh, kind of channel, channel and, and figure out on um, Correcting my wrongs versus trying to figure out how to correct y'all. So you dig what I'm saying? Or whoever feel, you know, it's any kind of wrongs. I'd rather focus on self and see what the fuck I did or what I'm doing wrong. People going to say and do whatever the fuck they want to. Period. Everybody ain't meant to like you. So I don't want to be liked by all you motherfuckers anyway. <laughs> the hate, I need some of the hate. The hate is like yeah. fuel to my fire anyway. So I just learned to, uh, like I say, uh, focus the, on doing what I got to fucking do and, and, and turn a lot of the negative, uh, and make it work for myself. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times I've realized, you know, it's a problem when they're not talking about you. You know, one of the things that I, I will say that uh, this project that me and Drummer Boy got out right now, back on my buck shit, volume three, um, it's a little bit more than just a solid project. We, 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 you know, charted at number six. You dig what I'm saying? Through our iTunes and the steady more rising and going and all of that good stuff. But one thing Drummer told me about this, this tape in regards to all of the bullshit that, like you said, I've had to, you know, endure and go through. He said, Buck, man, you know, this is kind of more than just, just a fucking solid ass tape, we showing niggas brotherhood, you know, we bringing that brotherhood back to things, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, when it's really your brother, you dig what I'm saying, whether he's up or down, bro, you supposed to be your brother, you exactly. dig what I'm saying, and uh, that's, that's one of the things that stick to me in regards to what you're getting when you get me and Drummer Boy, you know what I'm saying, together. It's not just about him being a dope-ass producer, me being a dope-ass rapper. It's just more to it when you got real-life shit that come along with me right. and shit like that that 
that you getting to hear from this late, latest project that we just dropped. Drama Boy, what was your what was your process putting this putting it together? I just got the phone call, like, you know what I mean? Like, what you doing, nigga? Like, you see a nigga cooking heat, you know what I mean? I was just... So if a nigga just randomly shit. called you, you would just be no, making that's brother shit. Yeah, like, you know <laughs> Hold what I mean? On. Like, Hello? like, even, even <laughs> when the man just over here making some of the best shit <laughs> if, if, if the phone <laughs> ring, like, you know, if, you know, I ain't even, anytime 615 called me, it ain't too many people called me from 615, to be honest with you. It was a new number. And I ain't, I knew, I knew at some point bro was gonna call me. Right. Through, through everything that was going on. You know what I'm saying? So, Thanks. you know, shit, I seen 615, just picked that motherfucker up. I knew it was that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Pick up the phone. Shit, what you doing, nigga? Man, cooking up. What's up, nigga? You good? You, sh you, you ready to shake that shit up? You know what I mean? Like, I'm an uplifter, bro. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big brother. I worked at the YMCA. I'm from the Volunteer State. Nigga, I got you. <laughs> 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 Keep topping yourself. Yeah. These niggas is just topping yourself. You know what I mean? Next thing you know, like, cause, like, like, yeah, when like, I was like, 15, like, 15 <laughs> I started a Goodwill chapter. We had the bike buyback program. We were buying back bikes from children in the community. So they'll have a sense of self-worth to know what it's like to sell something for cash. Exactly. Cash. Man, my grandfather was a principal. Bye, you know what bike, I'm saying? Bike. So it, it was like a lot of shit that I learned from him on like just how to be therapeutic and and help people figure out what the fuck they got going on. What what what? Cause you know what I'm saying. Sometimes it can be a lot of shit going on. Hell yeah! Not just a producer so, in music. So, you're a producer yeah, in life. It yeah, takes something to produce yeah. that to be able to. Absolutely. You know what I mean, real so life I, producer. I, like like first thing I'm gonna do is listen to your music. I bet what you got, what you been recording. He played me some records. He got down, been doing in Nashville. Woo, 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 just so I can see where a nigga mind at. You know what I'm saying? We we see what the story is. So what? How we gonna how we gonna how we gonna tell that motherfucker? Yeah. And him, he picky as a motherfucker on beats, so you gotta come with. He want straight, trap, hard shit. Did you know that he thought you were picky? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picky. <laughs> oh, 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 I didn't know. Oh, oh, I was I picky for shit. real. Give me my knife, nigga. No, you know how to do it. Give me the knife, nigga. Oh, I'm picky, huh? Nigga, he want the knife. No, don't give it to him. But that's what you want, bro. Like, like Jeezy, Tilt, yeah, shit. They Gucci, specific. You know, Drake, shit. A lot of niggas that I done work with, they was very specific on what they want. They they feel a certain type of way. You see what I'm saying? If you yeah. angry, if you mad at the world, you you da 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 da, bro. You want some shit that matches how you feel. You ever have a gangsta ass nigga like, hey, bro? Can you put some little horns in there? So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, when we first started, I was mad at the bitch, but I, I feel like I'm mad better now. I don't, um, I don't have no problem catering. You know what I'm saying? Like, like at the end of the day, I, I, you got to look at it like I'm going to work for hire. Yeah. So I, I'm, I work for you. I get, I dive into your world. Bro, you know these yeah, new man, rappers be on pills and shit. Hey, big bro, you can put some doves in that bitch. <laughs> and I'm putting them motherfuckers in there. Noise. I just want to hear the wings. You know, hey, hey, that shit gonna, say, that shit gonna sound hard as a motherfucker. Big bro, that shit gonna sound crazy. Put them, put them gold wings in that bitch. Hey, that's cool. Hold on, I'm finna going back in the booth. Shoot that nigga in. Put, put them wings. <laughs> and then he said, I want to hear the bird. I just want to hear. <laughs> we did that. Hey, we did that with uh, I forget the name of the song, but we did it with Gucci. For real. I remember uh, it was one of the Ferrari Boy songs. We put the chicken talk or some shit. Yeah, one of them motherfuckers. Yeah. Dun, dun, That's hard. Y'all yeah, brought the real bird in that motherfucker. Hell yeah, got the live. Had to loop it. That motherfucker hard. Nah, man. Honestly, though, the process. Uh, especially with creating back on my buck shit. I give drum a lot of credit. I tell him, man, you should be drummer boy, AKA the conductor, because he's one of them niggas where, you know, I may have an idea in my head from when I'm listening to the beat. Yeah, he make that shit from the future. Facts. Like so listen I'll... to that shit that he was naming that he did, like, that shit that, that's that shit that don't never get hit. old. That's Big that facts. real, even the nigga make Big music. Facts. Standing on base. Yeah. Yeah. So I tell this nigga, 
Dang. And that's dope. You slip that one in there, nigga. Yeah. You that's feel me? Because it, it's, <laughs> it just told me something. <laughs> <laughs> They stand in ovation. Yeah, do, shit, do, do, do. yeah, nigga had to tell him that shit. Hey, 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 hey. Put some claps in that motherfucker, nigga. <laughs> Not regular claps. I want nah. graduation claps. Nigga. Hey, <laughs> hey, real quick, though. That's another dude. I was talking about picky. Bro, the night before Jeezy turning in, motivation one on one. Trap motivation one on one. I'm turning in. He, he, t he calling the shit out of me. Bro, what we gonna do with this beat? What we gonna do with this beat? I had sold the original beat to Stand in Ovation six months prior. You know what I'm saying? So I got down, took one verse. I stay in Stone Mountain. I'm driving to Patchwork. You know what I mean? A little 40, 30 minute drive. Pull up with the first verse. I gotta redo the beat. He sent me. He said, "You gotta come get the acapella." So I redo the shit. Go back. He ain't fuck with the first verse. You know what I'm saying? So I got to drive back Stone Mountain, redo another beat, pull up with the second verse. <sighs> that ain't it. That is, it's, that's close. So on the way back, nigga, I listened to the whole Travel by Mixtape. Shit. And I noticed it in every goddamn beat he had horns in that motherfucker. So I was like, all right, bet that's the first sound that I goddamn did. And I came with the horns, put the claps in that motherfucker. That shit sounded good with the hey. Yeah. Jeezy, uh, you know I know you're the snowman. You're going to have to get gas, back. man. I came <laughs> back. I came back. Oh, look, five look, times, look. Hey, I came back to Patchwork. It was about six in the morning. Leslie wrapping up the uh, uh, last mix. Coach K in there. You know what I'm saying? And, bro, that was literally the first time I heard Jeezy say, <laughs> Before the ad league, we even came out. <laughs> Swear to God, you know what I'm saying? And that, that was my first platinum plan. Damn, man. It was worth it. Bro, the lesson in that motherfucking story is so deep. I told you, this nigga make never was, give up. I do, man. Like, even like I was, I was saying, I process, bro. I'll, I'll have something going on in my head, and I just done learned that, you know, whatever it is that I'm hearing, Drummer, what you hear to this beat? And he'll give you a fucking melody or something that you just wasn't, it, it just wasn't yeah, there. I love so I'll be shit, like, man. damn, you know, what if I put this with what I'm already thinking too? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's how a lot of it get created. I just like to hear his input uh, outside of just making the beat because, you know, motherfucker be having these different melodies and shit as producers and shit going through their heads and, and sometimes the melodies be totally different from where I'm going at yeah. and I've been able to implement a lot of it into what I'm doing too. So that's, so that's so where major, the whole man. collaboration right. part come in there. Yeah. It's like, that's like you said, you good at what you're doing. He's great. You know, y'all both great in y'all own mediums, but it's like when y'all coming together, that's where the creativity flows. It ain't just send me the beat, I rap on the bitch, and now we got a song. It's yeah. like you got to collaborate and say, nigga, what you feel like? Oh, nigga, need them dubs? Hold on. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's literally what we do. You know, that's what we've been doing from the gate. Like, right. man, when we came in the game, like, it was, you know, a lot of people hadn't seen two people do the shit that we've done, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then doing this with three of us, you know what I'm saying? And dope. being on stage is never rehearsed. It's just we get on stage and we just... And collaborate. And yeah. collaborate. Yeah. Like hooping, and put the dudes on the rock. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? That's crazy. And it's just like, like, like you said, melody is something. I love, I love melody, man. That's one of my big things. I'm a music connoisseur, but Whoa. melody is something that's major. Like, and that's so Sure they want to ride with me. That type of shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's why, like, 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 for example, Young Thug is one of my favorite artists. Just yeah. I think that nigga is one of the He's incredible, my nigga. Just because of the sounds of that nigga. Yeah! It's like, what the... F that just, nigga's dope. You know what I mean? To be able to do that, right. it's like... And then to do that on your own is one, but to be able to collaborate with somebody else who has a whole nother pocket of whatever they thinking about and you be right. able to bring it together, that's when right. you make... Some put dope doves on that shit, bitch, man. <laughs> put, them, put them wings on that bitch, man. Like, you fly away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Put them hawks in them all. For um, <laughs> real. So, so, like, you what? After this project, now that you done done that, do you still have the desire to, like you said, you feel like you ain't got your just due? Do you still want that, that superstardom? Like, Hell yeah, man! This shit, you know, my fire has never burnt out. You know, it might have went low, but it's never burnt the fuck out. This shit lit me up to the point where I, I feel better. I feel like I'm grown even better than I was even in my, in my G unit years. You dig what I'm saying? Which was my younger years. 
I don't see no fucking retiring and all that shit for me. No time soon. Don't you retire. Fuck that. Yeah. None of that. They always want. Giving up they always and all want that, that rappers shit. to retire, nigga. Mick Jagger, ninety-seven years old. Hell yeah, still yeah, on stage. Come on, everybody. Hey, 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 it's your boy. Hey, 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 it's your boy. I'm hey, hey, playing on doing it like that. I'm still here. Everybody, put your hands in the air. Put your titties out. Do you remember this song? Cause I can't fucking remember it. <laughs> we the only, and I hate that about hip hop. If you remember the word sing them, I played the song. You know what I mean? I hate Come that on, about hip hop. We are only like, as big as the it's genre It's more grown is. niggas than young niggas. Yeah, like, and it's like as big as this genre is, it's like it's always like, oh, that nigga older. He watched that white. But any other genre of music, you see the country artists, the motherfuckers be performing for 50 years, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And selling out crowds, and it's yeah. still, it's space for that, for hip hop, because we create the music that creates the, the climate of the world. So it's like we, but I think we do it to ourselves as connoisseurs where we just Big automatically thing. say, oh, young buck, oh, that nigga was with G-Unit, that shit ain't cool no more. Okay. Yes, it is, motherfucker, take a listen. You Big know thing. what I mean? It's still something there that you can gain Fucking from right. where niggas at. Because every job experience. site in the world got at least one nigga who still wear G-Unit jeans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a nigga who got up this morning and wore some G-Unit jeans. Oh, it's a jeans. nigga right now who wore them tank tops work. on right yeah, now. Yeah, tank 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 he took it off for some bitches. Yeah. 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 They got that tank, tank top. top was a motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> bro. They, 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 I wouldn't put that motherfucker in tank top. Right next to the new rag. I ain't never seen a unit. I wouldn't wear any tank top. That tank top was strictly for 50. <laughs> Nobody else. That yeah. nigga's like he made that tank top just for him. It bro. was a U neck. <laughs> nigga, we had the V neck. 50 was, came with the U neck tank. That was a 50 top. You feel me? That's some a 50 shit. tank. You that's did. some shit that I can proudly say I never owned. Yeah. I that, was, nah. that shit looked like a field goal post to me when you looked at a nigga. Yeah, with yeah bro. Nigga, honestly. That shit different right there. I just didn't fuck with it. Yeah, I didn't me, fuck with the tank like top. Field, me. Me. Man, man, the man, that shit was just straight up. That looked like some shit you Straight up. But the sneakers though, nigga, I ain't gonna well, front. Them, the G on the sneakers. I fuck with the sneakers crazy, bro. I remember one time, man, 50 took the deal from us, man. Like, it was like, uh, we, we had got like a quarter million for, to, to, for out of Reebok in regards to me and the other, uh, other members of the group. Um, 50 basically put us in the mix. It was his sneaker deal, but he worked his hand to kind of get us a situation out of it where but the problem was that 50 wanted us to wear these I'm motherfucking shoes. I'm about to say y'all wasn't wearing them, nigga. He said y'all wasn't wearing them. Nigga, don't say, nah, no, no, nigga, we wearing them. Take on that one. Chico, we was wearing them, motherfucker. I wear them every goddamn day. Man, that nigga got to go to the bathroom in these motherfuckers. Take a shower with these motherfuckers. If you're not going to wear the tank top, nigga, you better wear the shoes every goddamn day. Let me look at the camera. Reebok, for $250,000, I'll throw away all my other shoes. Hey, man. Give us the $85,000 deal. Watch out. <laughs> we make them up. I ain't never taken them off, nigga. Shit, I'm <laughs> 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 I Yo. put some hard bottoms on them bitches and wear them to church. Uh. Yo, this nigga, <laughs> nigga, this do, nigga. Fuck this nigga every 50 day. and see a nigga with another pair of shoes <laughs> on, man, and just... Be mad for no fucking reason. No, like, that's a reason, bro. Yeah, bro. What the fuck are you got on Jordans, my nigga? You can't even dunk. Put on the goddamn CU. Put the CU on the song. What the fuck is wrong with you? But when Where I, them bitches? This shit when, I think of, when, when I think about this, this shit, 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 don't even shit, 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 Took you this long, you was dead ass wrong. Why in the fuck was I wearing them Gucci's, bro? Oh, they they didn't give you no fucking 250,000, oh, bro. Ain't no way in the world. You went and bought some shoes. Fucking shoes. shoes. And we got a you fucking truck. You probably would've still been getting money. Bro. Right. We got more than a motherfucker. I still wear them motherfuckers right now. Alan Harrison got a check coming when he's 66. Ain't no yeah. way in hell I gotta wear them fucking shoes to church, bro. Well, they not coming. <laughs> nah, I wasn't. They was going to church a lot of times anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never just 
nigga. Nigga, nigga, nigga got to wear these motherfuckers. Nigga got to wear these motherfuckers everywhere. Nigga, I'm telling you, I'm walking out there on the back of the motherfuckers out the shower. What's up, Chad? Man, my homie got married. You know what I wore? Eight by South I don't take my shit off. Nigga working in a hospital with them. Hey, nigga, if I work at Wendy's, I'm putting the slip resistant bottoms on my motherfucking jokes. Nigga, that's it. I'm not wearing nothing but the G's. You niggas was tripping. I'm talking about the thing about it is a nigga might have them That's on when ain't nobody moves. around and this nigga know a nigga ain't got them on. <laughs> right. You yeah, feel me? Nigga, nigga, you got nigga in the house, bro. Nigga in the house, bro. Just trying on shit. Oh, you ain't got them goddamn snoo- uh, the, the, them G units on, huh? No. <laughs> Man, no, speaking nigga. of endorsement, let me put these backwoods right here. You did? Nah, fuck that. I'd have had a closet full of them <laughs> Y'all seen that clip of Dr. Dre with all them Air Force Ones? That'd have been me with the G-Units, nigga. Big That's big. it. Everywhere I go, nigga, everybody, you can't come around me if you ain't got them on, nigga. Nigga, we are smoking backwoods. Yeah. Change this your shoes. Backwards. But right. nigga, you had y'all had your own shoe. Like that's a hood. Nah, that is bro. dream, nigga. That's to have your own shoe. That's it too is. good. It is a blessing. That's too good. Wait till I get mine. Oh, nigga, that, wait, listen, they give us our we boy. I don't give a fuck what company it is, nigga. Sacconi, come on with it. Whoever. I don't give a fuck. Pony, nigga. Whoever. Who else? Who got called? A, who was calling people niggas? Tell them to call me. <laughs> and any, any company that done got in trouble for calling call niggas niggas. Papa John's, if they want to fix that. <laughs> call this nigga. Hey, hey, boom. hey the Papa John's, nigga. Hey, nigga, you get the pepperoni on the tongue, you can take it off and put the sausage on that motherfucker. Boy, we'll make them bitches go. Come on, man. Yeah. Tell you. But oh. see, that's what I'm saying. Y'all, you done lived a lot of hood dreams already, man. So I know you say you don't feel like you got your just due. Yeah. But over here, we like to let niggas know who they is just in case they might have forgot. Nigga, Big you fact. cold and legendary. If it was a stop today, nigga, they got to put a statue up of you and Cash Real, my yeah. nigga. Real. I accept that, bro. I actually know where I would want them to put that motherfucker up at, well, too. Well. And the same parking lot project Pat picked you up. Oh, from. my mama. <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta have a plan. Right? No, they, they need <laughs> to put that motherfucker right in front of, of the fucking, uh, well, we just got a, a big museum that's honoring, uh, all the African music and shit around throughout, throughout my way. Uh, African American Museum. This big. Shout out some of the hoods in Nashville. Oh man, we got a uh, basically size east side, south side, west side, north side. Uh, that's, that's all of them. You know what I'm saying? Basically, <laughs> it's split out in the four. You want it? It's the north side, it's, south it's side. pockets east all in between west. that shit, street yeah. names and shit like that. But uh, man, we fuck with Nashville. Whenever yeah, we come bro, through there, we go through that, bro. Us. It don't matter how many shows it is. They, they selling, selling them every, out. They out every time, how many man, every time in we come, my nigga. I don't know if it's the same people or what. Yeah. My, my last show before the lit. pandemic was in Nashville, nigga. That was the last show I did. March 8, 2020. Two shows on a Sunday night. They sold both of them bitches out. I didn't work again in the whole 2020. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. So yeah. thank you, Nashville. Yeah. Believe that. Yeah, Believe that. Yeah. You know, I, it's, 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 it's a thing about where I come from, uh, Nashville, is that, you know, predominantly we known for country music. You yep. know what I'm saying? And, hey, uh, for real, for real. But but if you go, you know, a mile in in any it's direction, so many niggas, niggas, man. There you go. If you go a mile from in any direction, north, east, south, or west, you gonna you gonna land in in, in a hood. You dig what I'm saying? And, uh, and I know there's one thing that, that shocked them exists. white people too is that niggas be going to all that country music shit and still be niggas. I don't give a fuck. We in here. Man. Two of them funnel cakes. <laughs> hell, you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> Turn the Hank Williams up. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, it's just things like that that I, I, me being uh, basically one of the one of the the, the only artists to actually sell. A million records coming from there at this point. Uh, it opened a lot of doors, but like I say, it's still a lot of a lot of doors has got to be broke down. Like I, I was speaking on, we got an African American museum, and we got slots of every fucking different artist, and it ain't even a fucking slot of mine. Like how y'all gonna have a fucking African American museum of music? and don't even have the individual, the only individual that come from the city. Somebody old probably Googled you. You get what I'm No, that boy got the fight down there. Every day, every day. Every time I see this motherfucker, he's snacking. 
back from somebody. They no, were down no, there no, with 50 Cent and them, and then, then something happened with Dr. Dre and them, and we just don't want to get caught up in all that mess. <laughs> there you go. It's just the politics. It's about getting some of them old motherfuckers out of there. It's some of these new motherfuckers. It's coming, people. though. Trust yeah. and believe, because you still out here laying down Big a flat of groundwork and still laying down. Yo, you ain't done yet. You know what I'm saying? And, and you back still, on that book shit. Yeah, you still it's doing it. So fixed. you still laying down the foundation that, that you know, they're going to have to respect because, you know, a million or anything is 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 a lot. I don't give a fuck what you say. Dude, this so, nigga sold a million records when they cost $20. When they really, when you really had to go stand outside in and, line and to get that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. When they came with the book in them and you, you get to read and see the pictures and shit. That's, see, that's why, real. Yeah. That's Credits. why. Credits. You, you wonder, see produce and you right. wonder yeah. why the fucking tour is damn near about to be almost sold. The fucking album. My back on my book shit volume up. Uh, well, back on my book shit tour. It's been booked crazy, you know what I mean? To any of the promoters that's tapped in, try to get you a date. You dig what I'm saying? We kind of really been, uh, really, this this album, this tape is just them kind of lit that flame back up. I actually dropped a, a tape a week before back on my book, Shit Volume 3. So I had two tapes on the charts. The other one is titled The Vaccine. You understand oh, what I'm shit. saying? The vaccine. Oh, was, shit. Niggas gotta get it. Get it? Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just don't want to get caught up in that mess. <laughs> <laughs> but make sure y'all go get the vaccine. I'm talking about the music. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, right. Bro, you gotta get that. take this shit yeah, down, yeah, bro. Right, you can't even exactly. say the V word. You right. can't even say that, You better buddy. use virginity. I mean, yeah. Get the virginity. <laughs> but yeah, bro, uh... We actually about to run around the world on the back of my bug shit tour. And still excited. You got any features on the Hold up, you got any features? Tour buses and shit. Yeah, man. On the back of my bug shit volume three, we got a, a few features on there. Uh, one of the one Burner. of my favorite records is with Boosie. Uh, like you said, Burner. Shout out to Burner and shit and all of the the smoking that motherfucker Cookies. doing right now. Shout out to him and his brands. Uh, that nigga, nigga got to come through here. Sada Sada Baby. You got to come through here, nigga. This Chico the was the first nigga that uh, put me up on Sada Baby. Sada hard, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. In yeah. real life, too. Like, I fuck with I, I fuck with T, Grizzly, and Sada. We actually got a record that we have recorded uh, and put them both on the record. And this, You're known this, for this that shit now shit. at this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, at the time, <laughs> at the time we recorded, they was rocking together. Right. There wasn't nothing that I put together or none of that. But uh, yeah, man, that shit is that shit is dope. And uh, shout out to Scuba Steve. Even with the way. record that Burner's on, him and Scott Storch produced it, and that was something different for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Drummer Boy and Scott Storch yeah, collaborating on that record. Just, Chilling out like nigga and shit. You in LA, you like nigga, I'm out here, nigga. You know, I have been working with Scott Storch. People, everybody has seen that we were working shit. I'm like, Scott Storch is just rich as a fuck, right? <laughs> That's crazy. <clears throat> After what he went through. I need to still can't believe it. Nigga, and still got all the money back. You got to be a bad motherfucker to go through that. Man. And get all the bread back. So salute to Scott Storch. Still can't yeah, believe it. That. Yeah, my single with uh, the Rez Deshaun. Yeah, that's big. So I'm in at the studio. Rez Deshaun Cole. For like three days straight, we did 12 beats. And that mixtape he did work. with uh with uh Slim Duncan, still one of my favorite joints, man. That that what's the name of that song off that mixtape? Uh, R.I.P. Man. Uh, yeah, I know, man. That um, this shit crazy. My life is amazing. Oh, yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, yeah. putting on. Yeah, yeah that's my that shit. shit. I fuck with that. You know, the Rez, the Rez a solid dude, bro. I, I, I really appreciate that boy music as well. I tell you one of the one of my favorites, well, he is my favorite artist in rap next to Tupac. And I plan on, you know, working with him. And I always gotta give him his flowers every chance I get, and that's Scarface. Yeah. Now the funeral is over and all the tears have dried up. Niggas nice. in the coop in the back getting fired up. Ready to pull a pistol on a nigga that smoked my homie. Man. And I for an ass so now your life is what you owe me. Man. My nigga. <laughs> nigga. I just this feel like Faces, uh, that nigga, this is my favorite Scarface line. Nobody knows my name, they only know my face. On the for real of my nigga, they call me Scarface. I be like, that's your name, then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Face is one of the greatest Face, Face is one of the ever, greatest, man. especially from the ever. South, man, ever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Period. But, but for us, period, you know, I just feel like Face is one of them ones that is, is one of our, our real deal prophets, that living prophets. A poet. A poet that still man, here. I met this bitch one time. I had to met this. I had to yeah. fuck this bitch one time. 
Yeah. That nigga said that. Yeah. I met this bitch so fine. I had to fuck this bitch one time. Mm-hmm. And then my homies, man, that my homies is one of my favorite joints. I started small time, dope gang, cocaine, then the rocks on the block, I'm never broke, man. On, man. I nigga. got a pocket full of stone. Oh, man, I, UGK now is just like always been, uh, like, I, like I say, these are my roots. <clears throat> What kind of create what we got going on? Eight ball, eight ball, ball and MJG. I always know. bring up eight ball when niggas start talking about uh, lyricism. Lyricism, that cold cold south man. man. A lot of these youngsters, man, you bring up some of this shit, they like. It ain't, never, they, it ain't they fault that they ain't never heard. Not at all. Not at all. It's, hey, it's for us to educate. Them. Right. Take the time and go listen. And go to listen to shit. To I was shit. I'm talking about some shit that's, that's real life. And that's my man, with you Matt forever. Basement, nigga, that re- I'm talking about, because I'm damn from the city. I'm from D.C. We was influenced a lot by Southern <clears> music because we <throat> had go go. We had our own music. So a lot of it was influencing, you know, just the streets. That's They was talking about the shit that was going on. Big so friend. we was little boys in the basement. And listening to Ghetto Dope and Scarface and UGK and all these different people. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? When I hear people say that the South mm-hmm. don't got no lyricism and they ain't got no, you, you crazy as you fuck. Crazy you ever heard fuck. these niggas on these records? Nigga, they telling real stories. So yeah. much drama in a nigga life. I have to take the scenic route home and check my closets at night. <laughs> Not afraid of no, the dog, for real. just what the dog has. Killers with their face masks, trying to get my safe cash. If I catch them, should I blast, nigga? Hell yeah. Because if they catch me up in they shit, I'm a dead man. This right. nigga ate all the cold. Right. And then, it's like, you was talking about Pimp <clears throat> the way he kept murder is one of my favorite. Come on, top, man. Top three versus ever, nigga. The way that nigga Boom, came went on crazy. that motherfucker. Both of them niggas went crazy. Both of them niggas went nuts. That's one of the best on songs that. ever. I mean, Let's still, Pimp C, bitch. So what the fuck is up? Putting pot on the streets because I got big fucking nuts. nuts. Coming back from Weezer Anna in and the Fleetwood Lack. I just served them niggas shit to put their fingers on their back. back. Got the pounds going for four. Because you know I just paid two. two. Nigga bought 30 from me, so I fronted 42. Come on. He gon' probably sell them 100 times since the two. 24 is what I get, so nigga, fuck what, what you, you do. do. If I told you cocaine numbers, you would think I was nine. Right. Youngest niggas 22 was talking about they retired. Man, sign this nigga <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm, telling you, I'm telling you. that. But he was talking about you, nigga. Yeah. Youngest niggas 22. <laughs> <laughs> talk about they retired, he should have put that in the verse. I know Big a nigga fake. 14 with a yellow Lamborghini. <laughs> Bro, you ain't, you still like, to this day ain't heard a rapper be obliged, nigga. MJG the first nigga to be obliged. Nigga. I, I be, be obliged, obliged if you step, step outside. outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming out that. <laughs> Whatever that nigga got outside, I'm still doing it. Let me show you how cold MJG was. This nigga said, heat from your feet keeps me warm. What woman you know got warm feet, nigga? Not yeah. <laughs> that That's nigga was point. lying so much. Yeah. No, nah, nigga, she might have took her socks off. No, nigga, nigga women's feet be fresh, fresh feet. coming up off the socks. The nigga said he would be obliged if you step outside. Man, I'm talking about that was real pimping, bro. Real. Look at these money pimping hoes in style. Come on, man. Ain't that what y'all do, man? Yeah, we grew up on that, man. Say, man. Wow, bro, right. the first Memphis song I ever loved in my life was the original Looking for the Chewing. Oh, yeah. Looking for the chewing. I'm still, I'm always. Hey, Bobby, looking, looking for the chewing. <laughs> and that's what I be doing. Come on, bro. I'm always looking right, for that ass. ass like, and titties, the original. <laughs> skinny yeah. nigga. It's in the house. It's that shit. Yeah, that's skinny, why, skinny, nigga, that's why you say Project Panic. Walking with a gangster lip. No, Memphis area. Suckers out, bury ya. It's certain niggas that we just want to talk to. Like, like, you there one of them. Like, Project Pat, like, this, these is nigga. I met Pat in the airport. Man, this nigga talked for 45 minutes, standing at the luggage joint. They got both our bags just spinning around. I'm like, <laughs> but yeah, Pat, but shit, hey, man, what, did that shit really happen that hot summer's night when you was kicking it with Poncho, nigga? Like, it just... Those records Real shit. really okay. impact I'm gonna fuck them up, though. Wait till you listen to Tom Ski Mask. Oh, come on. You, nigga, you didn't put me on the Tom Ski Mask. Man, man. dead men call him. Endo G, nigga. <laughs> and Lil Blunt. Endo G. This nigga name Lil Now, when I die, 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 die. <laughs> Remember me? Bowling, bowling. <laughs> now, if I, what? Born to die, fresh out the wound, 1973. Play a fly. Oh, that Play nigga a there. He just put out a remix of Michael Jackson. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I want yeah. to snort, snort some game. Yeah. <laughs> Do the next night. Man, that shit hard as a moment. He got two old verses today. That nigga said, 
check it, no one's home. I never needed a loan. I'm like, this nigga is crazy, man. I gotta go check it out. Bro, oh, see, this day. is the funniest shit ever. Yeah, Fly be going Fly crazy. Fly shoes in town, time, town mega blunts, I gotta smoke. That's the old shit. Thanks. But see, I think that that's one thing I don't think the South get the credit for, the influence that it's always had on the sound. Big fact. Always. Even back then, you we can get hear. it now. Even when, I mean, Trying now, yeah, it, it took over, it took yeah. over yeah. everything. Sound like, sound like, that's why, you know, people like Jay-Z, I, you know, I respect Jigga because he was one of them dudes that was the New York dudes. They had it, you know, him, Noriega, mm -hmm. all them dudes that was fucking with Southern Nori always then. been on Southern, like, he always did features with Southern rappers. That's yeah. why I think that nigga don't even realize how big his fan base is in the South. The shit South like been that. running shit now for 20 years. It's yeah. Close. yeah, it's close. Yeah, I've known Nori for a long time as well. I met Nori back when I was with Juvenile on the come up trying to make it, you know what I mean? Man, you, don't, you gotta write a book, Buck. Right, for real. I knew, man, I know. Young Buck's Documentary. Book. I, started, I, started writing a, I started writing a book in the, in, in the penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? I, I had, uh, I want to capture my experience by being a celebrity behind the walls. That's the actual name of it. You know, I, I end up going to the federal penitentiary. And I bet you walked the main line, didn't you? You better know it. Yes, there's sir. There's no other way for, for me. Uh, like I say, my experience in prison was, was a little bit different because I did it backwards. You know, when I was really in the streets doing a, doing a lot, you know what I mean? I was blessed to make it through. But then once I became a fucking full-fledged celebrity, I find myself waking up in the fucking penitentiary. <clears throat> you dig what I'm saying? So... The experience that I had from, from prison was a little bit different because everybody knows who you are, you know, regardless. So, you know, some motherfuckers fuck with you and some motherfuckers don't. You uh -huh. dig what I'm saying? Yeah, niggas hate to see you making stoke every time. Yeah, exactly. Again, <laughs> uh, yes, more news. He didn't make the shit from last time. Right. More Debbie cakes. They got stores everywhere yeah, around exactly. there, but I have my own nigga, store in Niggas are making big stoke every yeah. week. Spreads every day. But but the impact that I, I did do, I, I'll share this with y'all real quick, in prison that, that, that I really cherish myself for uh, was being a person, like I said, I had school and education with my thing. I fell in there, got my GED in prison and all of that. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I watched me motivate and, and do some things that I, I, I realized from the, 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 the guys in prison that's never been done. A lot of the older guys, my celly had, you know, 40 some years, he was 20 some men already. Shit like that, but I noticed started noticing the influence that I had on the prison period, and uh, I got smart enough, fast enough to to start uh, bringing my energy towards the wardens and shit like that to try to get them to do things that they had never done, and it worked. Uh, I was running into so many different artists in, in prison. Niggas really? want to rap. Niggas probably was raw as fuck. <laughs> niggas, the too. coldest niggas I've ever heard in my life is in prison. No cap. I heard niggas in prison that was so cold to the point where I had to figure out a way to at least, you know, some of them had life sentences. Some of them had so long that, you know, you don't know what, what's going, how, how it's going to play out for them. But I knew I had an influence in prison, so what I did was, uh, reached out to a couple guards and shit that, that, that used to be solid enough uh, for me to at least try to get something going. And they actually let me start having a music class in prison. Mm -hmm. And basically I was getting, uh, I was getting uh, all these guys together that was niggas that would come and want to rap for me and shit. I'm like, this nigga cold, this nigga cold. And um, we were able to put together a talent show, a, a whole show in prison. And... Uh, Man, the warden had green lighted on allowing us to do this on the actual basketball court on the yard of the prison. They brought in fucking cordless mics and, and big 
fucking speakers, like concert speakers, and sit it up around <laughs> that, the actual that bitch basketball was cold court. as fuck, Los. Niggas rapping yeah. about wild shit. Was, my drawers always clean. Oh, <laughs> fucking thing. And I ain't never had to wash my shit in the sink. <laughs> Bitch ass nigga. <laughs> this, shit was, this shit was crazy though, man, because, uh, you know, you got a lot of gang, a lot of politics, a lot of, you know, different nationalities and different races and individuals. But it was the first time in at least the prison that I was in, Yazoo Federal Penitentiary, uh, where you you actually seen everybody on the yard. It was so bad that I actually come from a prison where it was a compound, and in the federal prison, you have lows, mediums, and uh, the USP. Max. The, you know, they basically <coughs> had to shut down the medium and uh, the, the, uh, the USP to have enough guards to come. Do the talent show. To, to, because everybody had came out on the yard, and that's something that they never experienced at one time. And uh, it was a day where they allowed, loud, loud niggas to be kind of free in there. You know, you look around the prison yard and you see big clouds of smoke going up like in this motherfucker. And wasn't no guards bumping down, rushing on niggas. Niggas got, you know, hooch and everything Tuno, else. And all kind of shit, <laughs> but niggas got the experience feeling what a concert felt like. You understand what I'm saying? And I put it in a place of, you know, almost kind of hosting the situation and this rapper, this rapper. And your audience was was the other prisoners. And, and, and if they fuck with it, you know, it was just like niggas became celebrities in prison from that moment on. And the next day, you know, niggas is, <laughs> niggas is having all kind of shit by just kind of creating that ambience of, Oh, that nigga rap, that nigga cold. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of dudes was on their way out, and I felt like that's the least that I could have did was, you know, get them as heard as much as possible. So, you know, shit like that, man, bringing shit like that to the table, you know, is shit that, uh, you know, you don't expect nothing like this going to, to, to fucking prison, but you realize when you get there, at least I did, I got to make the best out of this situation. Make the most of this shit. Nigga, you say you don't get your credit. You done went and made history in jail. You done went and did the Apollo in the federal penitentiary, nigga. Big fact. I don't know how many niggas that rap or otherwise can say that they did that. Big fact. You know what I mean? Like, that's something that that needs to be. I'm glad you said that shit. I bet it was a nigga in there just doing acapella, doing the beat on his chest. Yeah. I really had plenty of them niggas. What's that nigga name? I'm Six Soups. Six soups. <laughs> That's my rap name. Six soups, nigga. Six yeah. soups. I ain't in lying, this bitch, man. you know I'm repping cell block six. I came up in this bitch from '94, got out in '96, came <laughs> back in this bitch in '97. Then I took it yeah, over '98 to '99. Man, I had to hold it hey, on. Hold then it. I went to court in early 2000 with no evidence. Hey. Then they came back in no two and gave a nigga a longer <laughs> six. See, <laughs> Yeah, right. Robin Raymond. Next up, nigga, you got Buck. Next up, we got uh, Robin Raymond and Six Soups. They coming up to do their thing. <laughs> Six Soups. You heard it, hey man. I just want to do a few jokes, man. They ain't gonna be here long. You heard about the dude in the shower? Oh, they telling me to cut the joke. <laughs> Do you want to tell some jokes tonight? I 
I said, I'll take a stab at it. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? Uh, <laughs> that one kills in Cleveland, just like I did. Keep it going. As y'all can see, I got it on lock. <laughs> When they ask me how to show up tonight, I'm gonna tell them I murdered. God damn it! Oh shit, man. But yeah, bro, like money couldn't pay for that type of experience. Nah, not bro. at all. Big facts, man. And it's just like to still be relevant, bro, right now is is a, is a blessing as well. I, I know so many motherfucking artists right now that that was around in the peak of G Unit or just was here. This no longer around, so I, I pride myself on just trying to stay relevant, keep pushing, keep getting good music out there, and come fucking with y'all crazy ass. Oh, man. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, where they can find that, that new tape at? All platform. It's on everything. 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 Back on my buck shit. Look, yeah. check this out. Three. Bro, three. This is the 85 South Show. Trap edition. Young Buck. You Joe did. Boy. It's your man, Carlos. And I happen to be Chico B. And we out this bitch. Yeah. 100, my nigga. Back like a spine. Dope shit, man. Oh, Y'all man. niggas don't rehearse shit. No, nigga. Y'all niggas is the code out here. We don't have shit, too. We don't have shit. Y'all niggas ain't gonna... Oh, everybody hurt shit. Get in there, Roy. Right on three. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm about to take my number. Let me get in there, Jay. Get over here, right, my yeah, buck, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, let me see my other phone. Oh, oh. Jack, you spilled the bill. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. Jack, you spilled the bill. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, shit.